There we go. And the chat is open. So how we're going to do this tonight, I'm going to be sharing a lot of information with you. Um, I'm going to try to temper it so that we are getting it done in a timely fashion, but also so that you're able to absorb and understand a lot of it. I think we have probably a gamut of, um, oh, I'm going to go ahead and mute everyone. Thank you. Of um, information of people who understand a lot about what's going on and people who maybe don't know anything about what's going on. So uh, Mrs. Bailey is on here and she's going to be monitoring the chat for me. Uh, so if you have a question, throw it in the chat. It would be really helpful if your questions were about the topic that we're on. And if you have a question um, that we don't get to, we will certainly take those at the end tonight. Okay. So I am recording and it is 6.02. So I am going to go ahead and get started this evening. I'll share my screen with you. This um, PowerPoint presentation, I'm actually going to throw into the chat. Um, let me go ahead and do that actually. I'm going to throw this into the chat. So if you want to, this will also be posted on our website. If you are like half an hour into this and just done listening to me, a lot of the information is on the slides. Anytime you see something underlined, it is a hyperlink to another document. Um, so there's a lot of information in here. So at any time, if you've got an emergency or you've got to go, you can go ahead and click on this right now, open it up on your own screen so that before you go, you'll have access to it. Otherwise, I'm going to be sharing that on my screen so you will be able to see it. Okay, I'm going to move you out of the way. All right, hopefully all of you are here for Dead Erding Elementary. I just wanted to take a moment to say thank you to everyone who's here tonight. Um, I don't know if you've noticed on the participant list, but it was optional for teachers to come tonight. However, I do think that we have, um, if not all, the, uh, a good deal of our staff here this evening. Um, and I think that that's a great sign of showing uh, unity that we are all here together to make sure that um, our kids are getting the best from all of us. There's a lot that is out of all of our control right now. So what we're gonna be talking about is the things that are within our control this evening. Um, so moving on, welcome back to campus. Yes, we have been in school, but we've been in school online and we are now welcoming kids back to our school campus. First and foremost, and I promise you, I will not read verbatim every slide tonight, but I do wanna read this part. First and foremost, we are thrilled to be seeing students in person if that's their choice. We also fully respect the choice to stay in distance learning. While there are guidelines and rules to keep us safe, we want to make sure that kids feel welcomed back to campus in a warm, caring environment where we foster learning and thinking. So we want that to be our main, main purpose. Yes, there are rules and protocols that we have to follow, um, but we wanna make sure that our kids know that we are here and with them, excited to be back. All right, this is your links to any important document. So all of these things that are underlined here are hyperlinks. Uh, you don't need to click on them now. A lot of them are actually in the document. Our pictures are in the document themselves. But I just wanted to give you kind of a little cheat sheet here. Um, and again, this will be posted on our website. So at, at any point, if you go, gosh, I wonder where that schedule is, or I wonder where that is, it's all right here in this one document for you. Um, so we'll go through that tonight, OK? Right now. Okay, the first thing that we're gonna go over tonight is the Parent Guardian Compact. Um, this is actually something that the district has put together for every family who is returning yeah. to campus. Um, thank you. Um, we're, if you can, you can kind of see it here, but there is a link to it um, down here below. It's also on the previous page. What we are asking you to do, and this link will be also separately on our website. If you are returning to campus, um, we're asking that you click on this link right here. It'll take you to a simple Google form where you'll put in your child's first name, last name. There is a link for you to print this out if you want to, look at it, read it as many times as you would like to. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Um, if you have any questions on that, feel free. Um, we'll be going over a lot of this tonight in our safety guidelines, but we do need that completed before students return to, to campus. 
All right, what is hybrid learning? It is a mixture of learning at school and learning at home. So students will still be expected to complete assignments independently at home. Um, Monday and Tuesday, this is kind of a written out version. I've got a couple other schedules to show you that might be easier. Um, so cohort A, Monday and Tuesday will come in the morning. They'll work at home in the afternoon. We'll go over the synchronous, the asynchronous, I'm sorry, days in a little bit. Wednesday, all students will be at home. Thursday and Friday, cohort B students will come to school in the morning. They'll complete work in the afternoon. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, cohort C will always be distance learning in the afternoon. Um, some of the things that you'll see today when we go over our school hours are slightly different. Um, class sizes will be a little different. They'll be smaller just because of the different cohorts. Um, some of the eating, drinking policies, recess, visitors on campus, pick up and drop off. Okay. So we have a couple different things that are happening and it's very confusing because it all relies on what happens next Tuesday the 16th. We did not make it to the red tier today, but we were so close. Um, we are under working under the pretense that we will be there next Tuesday. So we are fully planning to open on the 22nd. If that doesn't happen, then okay, well, we have, you know, five more days, but we are fully planning um, that we are going back on the 22nd. That means that all Wednesdays, and this has come out also from the district all year, but I think it was missed a little bit. All Wednesdays from now until the end of the year are asynchronous days for teacher planning and collaboration. So during those Wednesdays, teachers are working um, together, they're grading papers, they're planning lessons, so it's not a day off. Um, our specialists, so that's art, music, band, dance, recorder, they are still teaching on Wednesdays. So sometimes um, students will have Zoom classes on Wednesdays with a specialist. If we enter the red tier on 316, so next Tuesday, then the following three days after that, the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, will also be asynchronous days for planning time for teachers to be ready for that start on March 22nd. That's gonna be a game time decision. We will certainly blast that out and let you know um, as soon as we know next Tuesday. Okay, We're gonna be holding some orientations for students. For our kindergarten and first grade students, we will have an in-person orientation on Friday the 19th. It doesn't matter if we start on the 22nd or the 5th, we will hold that on the 19th um, because the students have never been on campus and a lot of the first grade students were hardly on campus and were very limited to the kindergarten area. That is something that is happening across the district in all kindergarten and first grades. Okay. So the teachers will be welcoming the kids for a half hour session. We'll be sending home more information on that tomorrow or the next day. If you want to, you can kind of jot down these times, but you should have a copy of this since I threw it into the chat if you're just joining us. During that time, the orientation will be welcome to school. Um, we're so glad to have you here. If you need to use the restroom, we'll go be going through some protocols um, just to make sure that when kids come to school that they are um, all prepared, they know what to expect and they're ready to learn. We are not allowed to have um, parents on campus because it will um, go against our occupancy rules. We have occupancy rules for each classroom. Um, so we are asking that uh, parents will drop their kids off just like they would any other morning. And we will take the kids and then we will bring them back out to you about half an hour later. All the other grades will receive a virtual orientation from me to go over all the new safety protocols. And those will be done on Thursday, the 18th. And I will be working with the teachers to do that um, during the school day. We have a video that is being, it's not quite done. I was hoping it would be done for tonight. Um, but a lot of the schools are putting their parent night off for about a week. And I just knew a lot of you have been asking about schedules and information. And I wanted to get all of this to you first. And then um, we'll get that video out that shows just a little bit more um, with kids actually acting out some of the safety protocols. This might be a little bit easier um, if you're still going cohort what and cohort when and what is my kid doing and where am I supposed to be? Um, this is one that might work for you. So again, we have cohorts A in the morning here in person, cohort B here in the morning in person, B and C in the afternoon, and A and C in the afternoon. 
These afternoon times are after lunch, so they can start anytime after 12, and they are specific by teacher. So while the in-person times are set 8.05 to 10.35, the afternoon times have to do with learning um, minutes, and those are the same minimums that have been um, in place this year. Okay, if you click on this link, it will take you to a page that has all of the teacher names and you will come up with something like this. So this is Mrs. Edwards. I was using hers as an example. What we wanted to do is try to create something. If you have like a daycare situation or you wanted to print something out for your refrigerator um, or you have multiple kids and you don't wanna look at uh, different schedules in different formats, um, every teacher uses the same format. It's the same font, it's the same colors. Everything is similar so that you, once you understand how to read one, you can read all of them. This way, if you are in cohort A and you just wanna cut off B and C, you don't even have to look at those. You can just say, okay, I'm cohort A. Here's when I'm in person. Every time it's blue, it's in person. Every time it's green, I'm working at home. Okay, and every teacher has in there their specialist time. So you can see art, dance, music, okay? And the different cohorts do have different times. And we'll go over the specialist um, schedule in a little bit, but cohort A has a different time for a lot of the specialists than your cohort B, okay? So if your kid is in the classes, same class as your friend's child, but they're in a different cohort, they will not very likely not have the specialists at the same time. So don't freak out if your friend says, oh yeah, my kid's in dance. And you're thinking, oh my gosh, my kid's supposed to be in dance. They're probably not, don't worry if you're in a different cohort. So these are all hyperlinked um, under those teacher schedules. Um, and you can look those up at any time. All of our specialists, so art, dance, music, band, and recorder, any of our English language classes, RSP, which is special ed, and speech classes will all be held virtually. So we can't cross cohorts. Um, so those teachers are going to be seeing kids virtually, but not during in-person instruction time. We wanna really keep that in-person instruction time for students and teachers working in person together. So students are expected to attend those classes via Zoom. If you click on this link right here, it will take you to the specialist schedule. Um, if you click on this link, it will take you to the ELD classes. We are not able to post the RSP and speech schedule publicly because um, that is for confidentiality, but the RSP, so Learning Center and speech will be getting in, in contact with those individual families and letting you know the times. So if you clicked on the specialist schedule, this is what you would find. Um, by the way, this year, you know how celebrities get honorary degrees? I'm waiting for my honorary degree in like technology, um, law, because I've been reading oh so many different um, contract agreements this year. So I feel like I'm making schedules, all the things that I was not taught in any education class ever. So I'm waiting for all those honorary degrees to just come falling down on me. So this was really fun to make. Um, every color is a different teacher. Um, and if you click on the schedule, this is the first page. The second page, we tried to make it a lot easier this time. Every teacher only has one link. So if they are going to um, see Miss Burris for anything, for band, for recorder, for music, they're always gonna click on her same link. There's not a different link for every class like there was last time. So there's four links, one for each teacher. It should make it much easier for the kids um, to handle, okay? Uh, again, this is a very kind of difficult for parents to read necessarily. That's why we gave you the green and blue one that I showed earlier. This is mostly for teachers, but if you're just curious what's going on, here's the entire schedule. And if you're thinking you need me to make a chore chart for your home, just let me know. I can go at these schedules. All right, things you need before coming to campus. So we're gonna shift from schedules into a little bit of our protocols. Um, you're gonna see a symptom screening on the next page. We do ask that you do that at home. You do not need to turn anything in for us. We're gonna go over masks. Um, we do have some backup masks at school. Um, we'll see how long those last. We should have enough. If we start running out, we can order more, but we do suggest that you find a mask that really works for your child. Um, the district compact is the one that I showed you at the beginning. You can easily do that on the Google form. If you need a printed copy, we can get you that as well. 
please make sure in the system that your emergency contact information is up to date so that if something were to happen um, with your student, if they were to get sick during school, we do need to make sure we have someone to come pick them up ASAP. Okay. Um, come up with a plan for picking up and dropping off your student. We'll be going over all of those logistics in just a little bit. Plan for if your student needs to be quarantined um, and or picked up from school early due to symptoms and illness. So make sure you have a backup. Please make sure that um, all of your kids have a full water bottle. Our water fountains are not on, nor will they be on. So we do ask that kids bring a water bottle with them that they can have. If students or guardians have difficulty following these guidelines, students may be recommended to transfer to the cohort C for distance learning. I don't foresee any of these being an issue, um, especially not at Detterding. So I don't think we're gonna have any problems there. Okay, so here's a quick little checklist. We've got a couple different ones in here. Every day before I go to school, temperature check, um, symptom free for 24 hours, mask, full water bottle, make sure you have your backpack, especially for our younger students um, who have packets, we will not have extra packets at school, those packets need to travel back and forth um, with the students. So your teachers are going to be getting um, out to you the information that you will need to what, what needs to travel back and forth between home and school. We are going to be trying to eliminate, um, well, first of all, our technology, all of our technology is now at your home and we are not bringing Chromebooks to school. They should not be traveling. They stay at home. Um, so we will be eliminating the use of technology in class because that should be um, really protected for teacher student time one on one. The only exception is sixth grade who all of their curriculum is online, so they will have to have access to their Chromebooks which we are getting a set at school. Nobody needs to be bringing their Chromebook back and forth. Okay, here's a pre-screening tool for you at home. Again, this is just something the district was giving out as a, um, a possibility of something you might wanna do at home. You do not need to do this or turn this in to us at all. We are trusting that you're taking care of this at home. Um, and if you have any issues, just let us know. We'll make sure you know, to mark your child absent. If they need to stay home, let's say your child doesn't feel good and you would want to make sure that you're staying on the safe side, um, contact your teacher and they will let you know the best thing might be if your child feels well enough, they could, let's say they were in cohort A supposed to be coming to school, they could jump on with B and C that afternoon so that they're not missing any instruction. So get with your teacher and, and email them and figure out what the best way is to make that up. This is something that we have in every classroom. It will be um, what the teachers follow for our decision tree. This is from the county. So this is how we will be determining how, wh who gives to the sick, sick room, who do we send home. Um, and we did wanna note that if your child has asthma or any other issues, we will be using a baseline. So if your child um, has asthma and has always had certain symptoms, the symptoms would need to change in order for us to initiate um, sending them home. Okay. Anyone who's on campus is required to wear a mask. Um, there are the only exception is that sometimes the kindergarten, first grade, and maybe second grade teachers have a face shield um, that they will wear while standing far away from the kids so that the kids can see their mouth, especially during a phonics lesson. Um, but that would be the only time. Masks must be worn. We are not allowed to do bandanas, gaiters, or anything else. Um, please make sure that you are wearing the mask properly. My suggestion is if your students have not been wearing a mask at all, that you start practicing now um, for that two and a half hours that they will be at school. Okay. Well, what if my child comes, they're fine when they leave the house, but something happens and they don't feel well at school. So using that symptom tree that we showed you a couple slides back, teachers will call the office to report if a student's not feeling well. Um, we will not be having anyone traveling to and from the office as that will cross contaminate cohorts um, or classrooms. Um, an adult will then go to the classroom, meet the student, talk to the teacher to find out what's going on. And then we have a designated sick area, which I will show you on a map in a second, um, either indoor on the stage in the MP room or outside of the blue tables. It will depend on the weather. A guardian will be notified and the student will need to be picked up in a timely manner. 
Students who exhibit symptoms will not be able to return the following day because you have to be symptom free for at least 24 hours. So if you're in cohort A and you get sent home Monday, you will not be able to return on that Tuesday. I, again, like I said earlier, I do not expect any of this to be an issue at all. Um, the concerns I heard when we were going over this at the district level were more around um, maybe some middle school, high school kids who were a little bit um, maybe giving some pushback on some of the some of the rules. So I don't expect any of this. However, this is in here. If we do have any kind of incidents um, where someone's refusing to wear a mask, um, we will go through this protocol. Again, this is a district protocol. I, again, do not foresee any of this happening, um, but I did want to let you know. Of course, especially with our younger students, we understand that this is a learning curve for everybody um, and we'll be as patient as possible. Okay. Ooh, safety procedures. I took this picture and then realized, gosh, our cement is so dirty. I probably should have had that power washed before we painted all of these lovely things on the ground. Um, so these are painted in I, about 60% of the walkways are done. I'll go over the map in a minute, but I wanted to show you kind of a picture of what it looks like. We're trying to make things as fun as possible. Um, the last thing we wanted to do is it, to do is make it feel like kids are um, coming to some crazy institution where they have to walk on lines and make it, you know, it doesn't want, it doesn't need to be harsh. It needs to be fun. So we've got these little dolphins in between um, the arrows showing you which direction to walk. Again, they will be all over every walkway. The dolphins are placed about six feet apart. This angle doesn't show that very well. Um, the hand sanitizer is available in each room. Not all of the rooms have water, uh, especially most of our portables do not have sinks. Um, so the county says that the hand sanitizer that is in the room is um, comparable. Like I said, the water fountains will not be accessible. They are turned off now and they will continue, <laughs> excuse me, to be turned off. The sinks in the bathroom are on so the kids will be able to wash their hands in the bathrooms. All of the rooms on campus um, have occupancy signs as do the bathrooms. Um, all of that stuff had to be measured out. It was per square foot. Um, I'm sure there's some honorary degree I can get for all of that as well. Maybe a contractor's license, I'm not sure. Um, if the bathrooms are full, students will need to wait outside and we'll go over all of this with them. Um, and they'll need to wait outside about six feet apart. So when you're thinking about this at first, it sounds like, oh my gosh, there's gonna be this huge group of people outside of the bathrooms. But we have to remember that, first of all, we only have at the most half the school coming at a time in each cohort. And then you're dividing that by the number of classes we have. So the most we can even have in a classroom right now is 14 um, to 15 at the upper grades and 13 at the lower grades, which we don't have everyone coming back. We have about 10 to 12 per class. So it's not as many students as it seems like. All right. Um, I also want to just give a shout out to the logistics team. We had a team of teachers who helped with a lot of this. Um, one, because it was a lot of work for just me to do by myself. And two, it was great to have, you know, we talk about collaboration with kids all the time and it's great to have a lot of minds thinking. Um, so we made a lot of changes and this is what we have come up with. So this is, these are the maps for the walkways. And like I said, they're painted. So nobody needs to go memorizing any of these walkways. Okay. Please don't like sit your kid down and make sure, oh, you got to go left and you have to go right. And you have to go, they can follow the arrows and the dolphins. It is pretty easy to see. We just want you to know um, that we are taking precautions to make sure that we're following the guidelines, that kids are safe and walking um, away from each other. So we have a good flow. Anytime you see the arrows going um, both directions, um, know that this won't be happening at one time. The going to the building will be happening in the morning. The away from the building will be happening um, in the afternoon. Same thing with, or on dismissal, same thing with kindergarten. Um, we won't have classes passing by like this um, because they'll be coming in in the morning and out in the afternoon. Um, Okay, let's talk about drop off and pick up. So school starts at 8.05. Um, the guidelines, this is for the entire district, say you can drop off 10 minutes before and you need to pick up immediately after. We do not have anywhere to hold 
children or to have them wait. Um, so we do need to make sure that we are super efficient at getting kids picked up and dropped off. So for kindergarten, they start 10 minutes earlier. So the kindergarten start time is 7.55. If you're seeing right here, that means they can get dropped off at 7.45. We will not have either of these parking lot. This is the Panama drop off right here, this pull through. And neither of these areas will be open to um, anybody except staff prior to 745. At 745, we will be monitoring here who is able to come in and out of the parking lot. And that will only be for kindergarten parents until 755. This parking over here, this drive through will not be open until 755. It will be blocked off. Um, so no one will be able to get in, okay? Um, we'll do the drop-off. So we have, uh, we did have to move some classes around because we cannot share any rooms. So we have kindergarten, Mrs. Kwasney's class, Mr. Um, I'm sorry, Mrs. Marlin's class and Mr. Anderson's class is now up here in uh, the library. So his class will be dropped off over here and he'll be waiting out there the first few days. We'll make sure they know exactly where to go to get them dropped off and up to where they need to go. So those of you who are kinder parents, we know that you have never been on campus before. Um, we are taking that into consideration. We know that you would love to walk your student to class. We just can't uh, bend those guidelines. So the best we can do is have you pull up right here and the teacher's um, doors will be open. That's why we're doing the orientation to make sure the kids know exactly where to go. And there will be adults, um, including me out here and over here to make sure that kids know exactly where to go. At 7.55, we will open both areas for cars. And at that point, grades one through six will come in. If you are in first or second grade, you will be dropping off and picking up over here only. Your children will never be coming to the front of the school. They will only be coming to this side and any older siblings. So if you have a kid in first grade and you have a kid in fourth grade, both kids get dropped off here. You do not need to come over and make another drop off. All um, first, second and siblings will be dropped off here. They'll go in through first and siblings will go in through this gate, down this walkway, down here. First grade will continue around and into their classroom. Siblings will continue here and go up to the hill. That's where they go. We'll be helping direct everyone. And second grade is going to use this gate. There's a gate here at the other end of Panama. So they'll be going in and out of that gate. So second grade will never need to travel over in this area, in and out. There will be cones with teacher's names, both here and over here on Panama. Um, so they will, the kids will know where to line up at the end of the day. The cones will not be out in the morning because the kids will go straight to the classrooms. Teachers, teachers will have their doors open 10 minutes in advance. Um, for kids to come in. So I think that we can probably get this down. Obviously the first you know, few days, it's gonna take a little bit. We're all gonna have to be patient um, and work together. And if there's something that's a glaring problem, we will work on it and fix it. This is the best we could do um, coming up without ever having to try it. At the end of the day, kids will exit all out to the front. Teachers will be walking them out. Um, again, there will be cones. It will start down here with sixth, going down to third and over here, first and second. Siblings will go find their first and second grade sibling and stand with them. And then we will be calling out names um, as we see people coming in. We ask you to pull all the way forward. We'll start sending kids um, down right in here to get into the car. Okay. Um, we need to make sure that kids are ready to be in and out of that car. So in the morning, when you get in the car, please make sure your kids already have their shoes on. Please make sure they have finished their breakfast. Please make sure they're ready to just jump out with everything that they need for the day. If you are walking to school, um, which I highly suggest if you can, um, you could avoid all of this traffic. The drop off for walking is here. Um, if you're coming for third through sixth grade, or here, if you're coming for first and second grade, you're gonna drop off. Um, parents will need to leave at this point because we can't have um, anyone walking on campus except students and staff. At the end of the day, our walkers will walk out this way, down here and meet parents on this side, okay? The back gates and other gates will not be open because we cannot monitor any of that at this time. So unfortunately, without staff to be to monitor that, it's too many entrances and exits. 
if your child goes to discovery club or bridges i i don't know if anyone's contacted anybody about bridges yet i was only contacted on friday letting me know that we would be opening two bridges rooms um we will make sure that they know exactly where to go and get them to the right spot we've already worked with discovery club on that okay so we went over a lot of this already students may be only dropped off I, I just want to make sure that you understand that I too am a parent and I get that this is a very difficult and somewhat inconvenient schedule. Um, I too have had to beg rides for my child who can't be dropped off before eight. Um, so I, I understand this is, um, it's very difficult. I mean, we can only do what we can do, but we are not allowed to have kids on campus. There's just nowhere for people to wait and we cannot monitor that. Okay. So if that if this happens where we're having kids dropped off too early um we will need to have a discussion about the op option to go back to distance learning um for those students okay uh we already went over all this teachers will open their room 10 minutes ahead of time um the only time that we can have a parent on campus is if something needs to be an issue needs to be addressed in the office please try to handle any issues though um, via phone or email prior to coming on campus just so we can make sure that we're staying safe. I feel like the, the more we stay safe now, the faster we can get back to some normalcy at school. And um, we talked about older siblings, the first and second graders. If you have a sibling who is in kindergarten, um, my suggestion is coming right closer to 755 and we'll get you in and let your students start walking to class. Um, and then at the end of the day, um, we can talk about the pickup, but most likely you're gonna have to pick up your kindergartner and then um, come back around if you have a sibling. We'll try to figure out how to make that work. Okay. All right, this is our map of our bathroom and our sick areas. We currently have five student bathrooms on campus. This bathroom is not going to be um, open and available because we do need to have an adult monitoring um, the number of kids in the bathroom because of occupancy. Um, looking at our numbers and how many kids are out at recess or out at a time, we really don't need it right now. So this is our girls' bathroom, boys' bathroom downhill. This is our, these are our sick areas. So blue tables or on the stage. And then we have our two uphill bathrooms, okay? Adults will not be monitoring in the bathroom. So no need to worry about that. All right, deep breath, everyone doing okay? I can only see like four of you at a time, but no one looks like they're well, no one's crying from boredom yet. Let's see. All right, recess. This is the best part, right? This is what every kid comes to school for is recess. So we try to be very thoughtful about this. And again, thank you so much to the teachers who helped work on this. Um, masks do have to be worn even at recess time. Um, with the any kid who is really struggling and um, needs a mask break, we'll need to talk about that um with the teacher and with the parents we do not have the space that is required to have um masks break mask breaks i'm sorry for kids which is also why um we will not be having any snack time at recess um the kids can make it from 805 to 1035 you may have to start telling them that now i've seen a lot of kids on zoom having snacks pretty frequently so Now's a great time to say, hey, we're going back to school. Let's try to make it a couple hours without a snack. Let's try to get up and get out of our pajamas. I don't know. I mean, you can come to school in your pajamas, I guess, if you want to. Um, but I think this is going to be a big adjustment for some of the kids who haven't had to get up and come to school at 8.05 a.m. in the morning. It's always good to start early getting ready. So there will not be a snack time. Um, we do not have like I said, a space for that. Plus we really want the kids playing. It's their 15 minute break. Um, that is a duty-free time. So that's when the teachers get to go to the bathroom. And we have, um, I'm really excited about the rec aids. We have some fabulous parents and some former students who are gonna be taking on our rec aid duty and helping out at, at recess. We'll have one grade level at a time that will be outside and we cannot mix cohorts. So this is our downhill playground. Um, it's backwards, this is the front parking lot. Kindergarten will be using the kindergarten playground. They'll be out one class at a time instead of all playing together. These areas are designated and they will rotate. There is a schedule that will be coming out and we have to, depends on if we start on the 22nd or the 5th. 
Um, but let's just say we start on the 22nd and we have three first grade classes. We will assign each class an area. So let's say Mrs. Flores's class is going to be in zone one. Um, then the next week they'd be in zone two and then three and then four. So they'll get to rotate around. They are not allowed to play cross cohort, unfortunately, um, but they can play with the kids in their own cohort. And then uphill, same thing. We have six different areas where they will be out at recess time. And for recess, we have um, these equipment bags got delivered today. So we purchased new supplies so that um, every cohort has the exact same um, access to these items. Like I said, there's only uh, the most we have in a cohort right now is 12. So this is plenty of items for 12 kids to be playing with. Um, we did want to make sure that everyone had access to the same things because we are not allowed to um, cross contaminate our, our play items. Okay. This is the recess schedule. Um, first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade. So this is on the lower playground. We do have a five minute buffer because we want to make sure the kids get in before the other kids um, come out. Kinder playground. Um, I'm not sure the teachers, if they've decided yet who's going to be one, who's going to be two, who's going to be three, um, but those will be their recess times. And then our uphill playground um, will be 10 to 10, 15. And the reason that we need to stagger like this is because of the number of adults that we need to have outside. Um, and we need to have enough coverage to make sure that we can't have too many people in three places at one time. So the person who's doing kinder will move up to the upper playground or for one or two people to do this. Okay. Lunch and breakfast is changing a little bit. So there's going to be no more breakfast. That doesn't mean there won't be breakfast. I shouldn't say that. There's no more breakfast pickup in the morning prior to school starting. Um, so you students will receive their two meals, their breakfast and their lunch during the distribution at school or during the one pickup window. So um, if you are on campus Monday and Tuesday and you are getting a lunch, your lunch count will be done in the morning by your teacher. Our rec aides will be going to the multi-purpose room to pick up all of the bags of food. They will deliver those to the classrooms by 1030 and the kids will grab and go. They take them home. They do not eat at school. So they take those home with them and eat there. If they are not in person and you still wish to come get food, um, it is still available to everyone at no cost. Um, you can come on at these times, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, between 915 and 945. And the reason that we have to do that during the time that kids are on campus is because of the hours that um, our cafeteria people are working. We can't extend their hours. They have to be there. They, we can't have them working more than the hours on their contract. Um, Wednesdays are a little bit more flexible because we have more people coming on Wednesday, including the people who are um, not at, well, no one's at school that day. So you have an hour from 915 to 1015 if you'd like to come get food on those days. Oh, we are making really good time. Okay. Uh, Mrs. Bailey, would you interject if we had questions? Are you, are we good? Yeah. So there's a few okay. that okay. need to address a couple more times. Um, are parents allowed on campus for any reason, even if they are a volunteer? No, we're not allowed to have any volunteers at this time. And then um, will there be any new student orientation in person um, for students that have that are in the upper grades that haven't been on campus before? No, only for kids in kinder and first grade. Okay. And so the upper grades will be having the virtual orientation and Correct. teachers will be making sure that they know what to do when they get here. Um, in this parent compact in this document, um, will you be emailing it? The parent compact? I will email the link. Uh, and this, par this uh, PowerPoint. Uh, I can do both. I can email the PowerPoint as well as the Google form. The Google form has the link to the compact in it that they can view and then sign, fill out the Google form. And then um, for students who are in DC, are they allowed to bring their Chromebooks to school so they can attend? Um, yeah, they, yeah, Discovery Club has to bring their, bring their Chromebooks, yes. Um, and then will teachers be uh, issuing supply lists by grade? 
Some teachers are going to be doing supply lists. Um, I know we have ordered a lot of supplies in the office just in the last week for classes. So um, I would imagine that teachers, that's kind of what we've been working on are getting those lists out of what we need. Okay, and then um, several questions about masks and safety protocols. Um, one, if students' masks get wet, um, is there a way to change them? We have some backup masks, yes. Or our other okay. suggestion is I would have a backup mask in your backpack too. That's always a good idea. Um, I think at this point, probably we're all used to having like a litter of masks everywhere, right? Like <laughs> in your car, in your bag, and wherever you have one. I, my suggestion is to just have that extra um, in your bag, especially for uh, some of the kids I, it, it seemed to bother even adults, like some masks bother me more than others. And so I know that, oh, this one's really cute, but I can only wear it for about 10 minutes before I'm done with it. Um, and so if that's the case, then, you know, I would suggest wearing a more comfortable mask or, and then bringing a backup mask. We do have some if kids need them though. And as teachers, we've discussed that students may need a mask break and we have stations outside where they can go and change their mask if they need to um, and come back inside. Yes. Um, and then if they have reactions to san hand sanitizer, is that required? Is that what is what required them using hand sanitizer? Yes. Um, it is not required. It is recommended that they wash their hands anytime. Like if they go to the bathroom, we're hoping they wash their hands in the bathroom. I can tell you from my 20 plus experience of years in education that, um, there's a lot of kids who don't wash their hands. And as parents, you probably know that at home as well. Um, we have some adults who visit the office who don't wash their hands. Um, so we are asking that everybody, and yes, we do keep track of who's, no, we're just kidding. We don't keep track of who's washing their hands, but, um, um, and we know if a kid goes to the bathroom and they're back in 30 seconds, it's pretty likely they didn't wash their hands. Um, so we are asking that you please, they wash their hands anytime that they're using the restroom. Other than that, they, there shouldn't be a reason during class um, that they're touching anything or doing anything that, that may warrant that. Um, if kids feel more comfortable about using the hand sanitizer, they can, they can bring their own hand sanitizer. Um, for those of you who have been on campus and used the hand sanitizer, it has a certain strong smell that I don't find very appealing, um, but it's there. I'm sure it kills germs. Maybe that's why it smells that way. Um, and then the next round of questions has to do with the, the drop off and pick up. Um, first, okay. is there such a thing as tardies and uh, what to do if you're late? Are there tardies? This is one of the many questions that principals keep asking. We asked our attendance person last week. She said she doesn't know if there's tardies. So at this point, um, we don't know. Our best plan is that if there are tardies, um, all kids will need to be dropped off on the front because the, the gates will be locked on the side at 8.05. And, and Ms. Dina um, or Ms. Jennifer will be out front. We can't have kids coming in and out of the office. Um, prior to COVID, Ms. Dina was already having her personal space invaded quite often. Um, and while she loves kids, we can't have <laughs> them like right in her face. So um, one of us will be out front and figure out how to do that. Uh, I'm not super worried about tardies. A couple, yeah. <laughs> Myself included, am I gonna be tardy? Um, and then a couple of things were about the, the sibling drop-off. Can siblings walk the youngers to their classes? No, and they shouldn't need to because they'll be walking right by. So if they're going um, to first grade, then they will be walking down the same walkway and the sibling would be at the corner and the door, they, they could see where their student is going. They're like 20 feet away from it. So they will be walking almost all the way together. Second grade, um, the kids will just be going straight from the gate out to the um, portables. And then after school, who's gonna be uh, escorting the younger Kinder K-1-2 to Discovery Club? Uh, Discovery Club and I are working on that. Okay. So someone will. And then are bikes allowed on campus? Um, yeah, so if they, they need to follow the, the walking protocol, any bikes, and then please make sure if your student is bringing a bike that they have a lock 
It is very common that bikes come, aren't locked up, and mysteriously they're gone by the end of the day. I don't know in that two hours. Okay. And then um, the last round that I am just now seeing has to okay. do with, uh, is bridges actually open? <laughs> what are the times? <laughs> all I know, all I know is I got a call Friday saying Bridges needs to use space. I talked to the supervisor today. Um, she said there's going to be two cohorts of 16 kids each. I don't know who those kids are. I don't know. I don't know how they're offering it to kids. I, that's all I know. So I, I don't have any information. I had no idea that they were even coming until Friday. We're happy to have them. I just didn't know. And she did say that it's four hours. So ours would be 1030 to 230. And if they're at school all day, when are they going to eat? So if they go to Bridges or Discovery Club, they eat in Bridges or Discovery Club. And then we have several now that have to do with um, the distance learning students. And so um, let's see. What happens to the cohort if one student within the cohort tests positive for COVID? Um, I need to get the latest as of yesterday, we were told that that cohort, um, would not be shut down. Um, but I need to, I need to get more updated information on that because I heard conflicting information. Okay. And then how can you please explain how full-time distance learning will work for those who are choosing that option? Oh yeah. Good question. So distance learning, if you're choosing cohort C is all done in the afternoon. Um, and your teachers will be telling you, conveying to you what times. So it's not a set time. It's um, like the two and a half hours in the morning. Um, those minimums are the same. I believe the minimum for kindergarten is 45 minutes. And then it goes up um, through sixth grade, which is what, an hour and 15, I think. Um, so those are the minimums. I, I'm not sure it's, it's up to teacher discretion what they decide. I, I would imagine it's going to be a little longer than that, but they have between 12 and 235 to schedule that time. And then um, will asynchronous work like on Wednesdays be posted for the day by a specific time? That is not something we've talked about, but that's a really good question. Um, Yes, let me talk to teachers about that. I mean, my preference would be that it was done by 8 a.m., at least by the start of school. Um, I imagine just from a teacher yeah. perspective, I am, I'm sure that all our teachers would be posting it and letting the students know on Mondays and Tuesdays what's gonna be expected on Wednesdays. Um, then the other question is about daycare vans. Where do you want daycare vans to drop off? Uh, so we'll have to talk to the daycare specifically because I don't know which days we're talking about and who's in the daycare vans. So it would be really helpful if you are in a daycare, if you could email me and let me know which daycare is dropping off and then I can find out from the daycare like who they have and which cohorts. Um, it sure would be nice if they had kids in the, on the same days. We, we have a little bit of flexibility. So if, if your student's going or coming from a daycare, that would be really great if you could email me. And then um, if students are coming to Discovery Club on their non-in-person days and it okay. opens at eight o'clock, mm -hmm. uh, are they dropping off like normal now um, in person and the parents usually drop off and do COVID questions? Will this be the same procedure? Yes. Okay. And then um, the question of, will there be recordings of classes for those in distance learning so they can watch the instruction at a convenient time? Are you asking, is that question about recording like a teacher in person or? Yeah, it sounds like the question or the assumption is that the distance learning students are going to need the video of the morning instruction, but the- oh, No, no, the, the morning time is not, it's not concurrent teaching. So the morning time where the teacher's at school with students, 
Um, that is not recorded, that is not filmed, that is the teacher and the students doing their lesson. That same stuff will be taught later in the afternoon um, to students who are distance learning. It's really gonna be up to the teachers whether they want to record those afternoon sessions um, and how flexible they wanna be, but those are the, I mean, it is within the school hours. And one more about the 755 and the 805 drop off clash. So what do you want the older siblings to do? I, I want those parents to come at 755 <laughs> so that it's easier to get one in the kinder and one on their way wherever they're going. Okay. So uh, regular classrooms will be open at 755 so students can walk to their regular classroom and will be able to come inside. Correct. Um, and so if the cohort isn't shut down, if one tests positive, will the parents be notified that a student is COVID positive within the cohort? Yes, but we can't say who, but yes, it's the same, same thing as like when kids had lice or, um, you know, any of the other contagious things that were going around, we would certainly give that information to parents. And then some more about the distance learning. Um, are any distance learning students having to switch teachers? No, no one is switching teachers. Um, that is why this schedule is the way it is. <laughs> and if a student, uh, can a student switch to cohort C and do distance learning uh, at once we've gotten started? Yes, it is. It is very easy to switch from A and B to C. If you want to go to distance learning at any time, that's not a problem. It's going um, from A to B or B to A. So we have room for everybody to be in person. So if you're in C right now and you're thinking, I might want to come back, the only issue is if you can only come Mondays and Tuesdays, that cohort may be full. And the only opening we have for you is on a Thursday, Friday. And then if, if you know, your issue right now is if you haven't called me already, I've been able to handle every request that I've gotten. We've been able to make it work at this point. Um, but it's getting to the point where cohorts are really full. So if you know right now that you're assigned to a Monday, you're on A and you need to be on B, you need to let me know ASAP um, because I can change it most likely now. But as soon as we start filling up, I'm getting a lot of people who are wanting to go from C into A and B. So it's really important that if you are, you, you can only come on certain days that you email me or call the office. It's the easiest thing is to email me. Um, Dean and I usually can get that done within five minutes of you emailing me. And how can they find out what cohort their student is in? Oh, good question. So if you go into your student's portal, um, it's called the attendance group and it's in there. And if you can't find it, you can always email me. I'll help you. Yeah, and the then, cohorts are all posted in there. So those have been in there for a little while. And then we have several uh, questions about the equity of instruction between cohorts A and B and cohort C. Uh, are they receiving the ama same amount of, of, of minutes of instruction or not? They do not have to, no. These so my, I'm just, I'm just, these are not my rules. Okay? <laughs> this, is out there. Like these are, this is the Senate bill rules of, of what is the, that's why I said they're the minimums. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they're wondering if they're going to, is cohort C possibly getting less time with their teacher than cohort possibly, C? Possibly, yes. Okay. And um, the other, there's a question here, um, Aria Pacheco. I'm not sure, it's asking what will happen to the extracurricular classes? Are they still on or not? And I'm not sure if you mean dance, music, art, and band um, when you mean extracurricular classes, but if so, they are still on, yes. Yeah, she goes um, by Jenny. Jenny, I, I, if you're taught, are you taught, I know that Samantha, her daughter was in art and some other things. So we don't have any of the normal after school activities that we've had before. None of those are running right now only our in-school specialists um, will be doing classes. And then uh, two more. One is um, what system do we have to ensure that the right people are picking up the right kids? And one went, went with that, should there be family names in the dashboards again on the cars? Uh, the family name in the dashboard is 
awesome. That is how my daughter gets picked up from school and they, and we're going to be doing the same thing. I'm going to be yelling with the bullhorn from one end to the other, you know, Hey, get ready. Parents are here. So it really makes it helpful. Um, especially since I haven't met some of the new people in person. Otherwise, um, if I know you, I know what kind of car you drive. So I've kind of, I've got you pegged. Um, as far as excusing kids. So that the dismissal has never we've never in any school um there's never been a checkout system for kids when we dismiss kids they leave at the end of the day they're responsible for getting wherever they need to go so that hasn't changed at all um if there's something that you're worried about um please email me and let me know but especially with kinder like our, our kinder teachers are there they they wait with the kids to make sure that they get picked up and if something's taking too long then we have another adult there we, we don't leave kids out there by themselves um so I, again in my 20 plus years knock on wood never had a problem with that so hopefully that's not but if there's a concern if you have some ex circumstance where you're worried about it please let us know um, and then several questions um, that have said that they can't open the compact on that link. Okay, I'll try to look at what the permissions are on there. We'll have all of that um, on the website tomorrow. And I can, as soon as we're done here, I can look at what the permissions are on that. Okay. And then um, last couple is, can you park uh, on the Panama side and walk up to that area to pick up your child? Yes. Okay. And for, then for your own sanity, I would do whatever you could to avoid the parking lot. And, That's my suggestion, but you're welcome to do whatever you want. Okay. And then um, is about half the school coming back for in person? Like, what's our percentage of who's coming back versus not? I guess. Like, total? Oh, no. We have like mm, almost 90%. I don't know. I would say we have the, a, a big percentage coming back. And, and it's gone up. I just, in the last two weeks of announcing when school will start, we've had a lot of kids. Okay, back. So I would say it's somewhere between 80 and 90%. I have the cohort list. I just don't know what the exact percentage is, but it is, we have a very small percentage staying in distance learning. Like some classes only have one or two kids who are in distance learning. Okay. And then um, BB, you have a question here. When is school starting? And I'm not sure if you mean the date of the month or the time of day when you're asking that. So school is either starting on the 22nd, which we're hoping because that will be soon. We want to see everybody or on the 5th, which is right after spring break. And then the times are back in the PowerPoint 8.05. And then um, one more about uh, the COVID shutdown. If somebody in the cohort has it, will their cohort have to quarantine for two weeks and go remote? Well, that was originally, so I, I would love to tell you that um, there's been one answer to all of these questions for the last few months, but that is not the case. Just how many hours ago was I in a meeting? Seven, and there was a whole, new guideline that came out about safety. So it's just constantly changing. Um, again, yesterday when I was talking to a bunch of principals, we were all, the last thing that we had been told was that the cohort um, may not have to shut down. We need to get confirmation on that. And two weeks seems like a long time. I know that's what it used to be. Um, I, I need to get back to you guys on that because I, I don't, I don't have the a clear answer. I'm sorry. I don't. And last, someone, uh, hold on one second. A neighbor wanted me to remind everybody, please, please, please make sure that you're not blocking someone's driveway um, when you park and get out. Um, can people elect to go to distance learning if they find out that someone has COVID in the cohort? Um, Yes. I, yeah, I guess I, what we were trying to avoid is people jumping back and forth like, oh, hey, I've decided I want to go on vacation for a while. So I'm going to go distance learning for a week, but then I'll be back. And then, oh, I'm going to go on vacation again in a month. So I'm going to go distance learning. We, we don't, that's what we're trying to avoid is that switching back and forth a lot. But of course, like if that was the case, then I don't see why we couldn't make that accommodation. Okay. And then it, do we think there's a chance of us going back full time this year at all? That is so far above my pay grade. I do not want to answer that question. I know the, well, 
my suggestion is to listen to the next school board meeting. Um, and I, I do want to say that I really appreciate um, all of the parents. I am, I'm on every one of those school board meetings and I appreciate all the parents who have given feedback and in the manner in which you give feedback. Um, I just, I am really proud of the, the debtor parents for the way that they've handled that. I really appreciate it. Um, do kids need a note, a doctor's note to be able to come back to school if they've been sick? Nope. Not gonna go that. No, BB just. Nope, they do okay. not. And then um, Elia Sokovets, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, you're asking, will there be afternoon classes? And I'm not so sure. That yeah, the afternoon classes are the distance learning classes and then whoever's not in person. Um, so probably the easiest thing is to, um, your teachers will be sending out a schedule for you. So the schedule that I have where your teacher's schedules are just the basic, your, um, your teacher's gonna give you a much more in-depth schedule about like what subjects are at what time. Um, but the schedule that I had at the beginning there, which again, will be linked on our website tomorrow. Um, and you can get, if you go all the way back up in the chat here, let me see if I can, I'm going to put it in again for those of you that, that just came. Um, and how soon will we be notifying people if someone in the cohort does have um, COVID? Uh, as fast as I can get an email out. Okay. And are all the teachers returning to campus and are parents going to be allowed to know if the teachers have been vaccinated or not? Uh, no, they, the vaccination is a, is a personal thing. So um, no, that's not something that is going to be publicized. Um, I mean, uh, as what was the first part that you asked me? I'm sorry. I was looking uh, at the Are question. all the debtor teachers returning to campus? Um, I am working with HR to solidify the answer to that. So as soon as I have the, an answer, I will be notifying parents of that. And then it's not a requirement for teachers to be vaccinated to return to campus. Correct. Okay. Um, and the school board meeting is happening right now, I guess. <laughs> Probably. Yes. Yeah, I think so jump over onto that after this and you can have just have a full night of fun um so i did put that google drive uh the link back in the chat just now so if you want to click on that before we end the meeting i'm not ending it right this second but when we end the meeting um you'll still have access to that and all of those links all right so i believe we've covered covered everything Wow, I really thought we were going to be hanging out together till I don't know, eight. So not that I don't want to compact, hang out. With they're saying the compact works and okay, compliments to the team um, for the thought out and communicated plan. So, oh, well, thank you. It, it's a lot of planning. It takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. And we know that, and I joke about the honorary degrees, but um, every one of you at home is an, is an honorary teacher now as well. So we know that um, it takes, it, it, this has been really showing it takes a village. Um, we've always said that, but this is definitely, we, we couldn't be doing all this without the support of everybody at home. So we really appreciate that. Oh, hi, Kaya. See, you, and, and it's so, I just keep telling teachers, it's going to be so worth that when we see these kids in person and we get to see them on campus, it's, it's all so stressful at the moment. Um, and we're just so excited to have kids back still respecting that some people want to stay in distance learning and that's fine too. Okay. All right. You know where to find me. Um, can we keep the links going to the PTA meetings and all those meetings too? Yes. So there are actually a few good things that have come out of um, COVID, if you can believe that, which are uh, like Zoom, having access to this. We've gotten a lot of positive feedback about parent conferences when you don't have to leave work and you can jump on a Zoom um, to, to do a parent conference for 15 to 20 minutes and you spend less time, because uh, generally you'd probably spend more time in the car on the way to the conference than you do at the conference. So um, of course we, we still may offer in-person conferences, but this is a great way um, to get, to make it very efficient for parents and also um, 
like the PTO meetings and stuff, a lot of that will stay on Zoom. We've actually had a better, better attendance on Zoom than we have in person. So, uh, but I get it. No, who do, who wants to leave their house at 645 at night and drive to the dark school and hang out? I mean, I do, but I don't know if anyone else wants to do that. Especially when you have kids at home to yes. you and you yes. can just mute yourself and still listen and yes. Yes, thank you. We appreciate all of that. Are you kidding, Amberly? That's why I want to leave home. <laughs> well, for those of you that want to leave home, we can get together and we can Zoom concurrently with everybody else. So, um, oh, good question. There, there are counselors. So we have our MTSS counselor and our therapist. They have continued to work with kids and um, are seeing some kids where they're doing one-on-one -on -one counseling in person. And they will continue, well, um, Judy will continue to be on site. We only have space for one. Um, so she will be on site with us. So that's great. Okay, you know where to find me. We will make sure that all of this stuff gets up tomorrow um, and is ready and just keep waiting for that announcement next Tuesday to see what the date is, but I, I really would plan on the, on the 22nd. Um, and just, if you get that extra five days, you do, but okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here tonight. Um, thank you for not yelling at me. <laughs> really, I, I wish I could make things the way that everyone wanted them to be all of the time. Um, and so I'm really sorry I can't, but we're doing the best we can with what we can control at our site. And we can't wait to see you and your kids. All right. Have a good evening and hopefully we'll see you soon.